It's morning again in America. In the five o'clock hour of pre-dawn, teenagers are waking. They walk to the bus stop or get behind the wheel of the car in the dark. Silently, they make their way to school, yawning on the way. They might hear their stomachs growl because they probably didn't wake up early enough to eat breakfast. This isn't the Morning in America commercial of Ronald Reagan. It's the day-to-day -day experience of millions of our teenagers driving them further into sleep deprivation. This is something that we in the United States are doing to our kids. Teen sleep deprivation is a problem of epidemic proportion, and our society is doing very little about it. You don't have to just take my word for it. In its Healthy People 2020 campaign, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services set a goal to increase the percentage of teenagers who are getting at least eight hours of sleep per night. When teenagers do not get enough sleep, they have difficulty with academic performance, with physical and mental health, with mood, and with safety. I know this not only because I'm a pediatric sleep psychologist at St. Jude, but because I'm the mom of two teenage boys. My older son is a freshman in high school. He can be the life of the party. He's actually been talking since he was eight months old. Yet when it's morning in my house, it's silent. The only words spoken are things like, have you seen my hoodie? Or do you have your key? Even the dog doesn't wake up. <laughs> this is literally my dog. She sleeps through the silence. My son walks out the door into the dark to the bus stop. He disappears by the time he reaches the end of my driveway. And all I can see is the blinking lights of the school bus. Somewhere in my neighborhood, someone has a rooster. I don't know who they are or why they have a rooster in a suburban neighborhood, but long after my son has left for school, after he's already in his first period class, I can hear that rooster crow. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the Centers for Disease Control and basically any other major health organization you can think of in the United States have all stated that no middle or high school should start earlier than 8.30 a.m. Now, our pediatricians prescribe medications for our kids, and we listen. The CDC says, throw out your romaine lettuce, and no one's eating a salad. Yet we struggle to follow this clear guideline to promote health in our children. The importance of healthy school start times and maintaining healthy sleep in teens is a widely accepted fact by sleep professionals, well-respected researchers, physicians, psychologists. This is not should we or should we not eat eggs or should we eat dark chocolate or drink red wine. This is an undisputed change that we can make that has a positive benefit on our kids. And here's why this matters. Teenagers need about eight to 10 hours of sleep to function well. Yet with the onset of puberty comes a delay in circadian rhythm or our sleep-wake rhythm. Most teenagers cannot fall asleep before 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night, even if they put their phones away, and they should. But if they have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning to go to school, that's like an adult getting up at 3.30 or four o'clock every single day. We're asking our teenagers to walk into algebra or AP physics and perform well. Would you wanna walk into your boss's office at 5.30 in the morning and pitch a big idea? We literally clean our brains while we sleep. 
washing away harmful toxins and making room for memories to be stored. When teens and kids don't get enough sleep, they have worse academic performance, poor memory, and poor organization. The kids and teens that I treat at St. Jude are at risk for problems in all of these areas. And when they're forced to go to school at an unhealthily early time, we are forcing them to have worse functioning than they otherwise would. Even in healthy teens, those who get up at five o'clock in the morning to go to school have worse grades or standardized test scores. Teens who don't get enough sleep move less and they're far more likely to be overweight. They're also more likely to have problems with depression, with risk taking, and with suicide. All of these are significant concerns for our teens. In people who don't get enough sleep, we see more suicidal thoughts, behaviors, and completed suicide across the age spectrum from youth through older adults. Probably because of difficulty with attention and decision making, people who don't sleep enough are at far greater risk of having accidents. This is the reason the FAA mandates rest time between flights for pilots. 20% of motor vehicle accidents are estimated to be related to a sleepy driver like this one here. Now consider the impact on our inexperienced teen drivers. In one school district in Wyoming that changed their high school start time, they saw a 70% reduction in motor vehicle accidents with teen drivers. So we can see that there's a lot of problems with not getting enough sleep, but what about sleeping at the wrong time? We know from night shift workers that being asleep when they should be awake and being awake when they should be asleep causes a multitude of problems. We see problems with memory, with substance use, obesity, and even cancer. With our teenagers, forcing them into this excessively early start time is turning them into pre-dawn shift workers. And what about our communities? The impact of teen sleep deprivation goes far beyond the individual teen. If we could help kids go to school at a healthy time and get adequate sleep, we could see fewer teen suicides, fewer sleepy teen drivers coming around the corner in your neighborhood, and fewer teens at home for hours in the early afternoon before their parents get off work. But what kind of trouble could a teen get in all alone for hours? I see so many problems with chronic sleep deprivation in teens. Am I sure that changing start times would make a difference? Yes, I absolutely am with no hesitation. Countless studies support the benefit to teens of changing high school start times. About 20 years ago, a district in Minneapolis changed their start time later. And the sleep researchers there were fascinated to see what's gonna happen to these kids. Skeptics said they're just going to stay up later, and they were worried that they would see a decline in extracurricular participation, band, cheer, drama. What they found was just the opposite. The teens did not stay up later, but they did get a lot more sleep because they were sleeping later in the morning, and there was no change in extracurricular participation. The teens also had better grades and better mood. Now we started to see some momentum. Now we started to see some other districts start to take this on. Not in my own district, the school there starts at seven. About two years ago, the Seattle public school system, one of the largest in the country, changed their high school start time from 7.50 to 8.45. Now in my son's district, 7.50 would be a dream, but the Seattle board had seen this uh, information and really wanted to see if they could make a difference. So once again, these sleep researchers pounced on this idea. Now it's been 20 years. Now we have cell phones. Are these kids really going to go to bed? The answer is yes. 
So what they found is the kids stayed up maybe 10 minutes later, but they slept much later in the morning, getting more than 30 minutes extra sleep each day. Over the course of a school week, that's two and a half hours of extra sleep. Not surprisingly, the teens were less sleepy. They also had better attendance, fewer tardies, and better grades. Even more recently, my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Lisa Meltzer, helped this initiative with a school district outside of Denver. They changed their start times in the high school from 7.10 to 8.20. Before the change, about a quarter of their high school students were getting the minimum recommended eight hours of sleep per night. After the change, 60%. That's astounding. And it's not just here in the United States. Very recently, the Minister of Education in France decided that no student between the ages of 15 and 18 would go to school before 9 a.m. Now, freedom fries aside, that's a remarkable impact on health for French teens. So as we're looking at the importance of this sleep for our teenagers, it occurs to me what happens to the kids and teens that I treat at St. Jude teenagers with cancer or blood disorders who also have sleep problems. When they come to me, one of the very first questions I ask is, what time does your school start in the morning? Now, if the teen tells me 8.30, which almost never happens, I'm in good shape. There's a lot I can do as a psychologist to help this teen sleep better and feel better during the day and help their health. If they tell me 7 or 7.30, my hands are tied and I have to turn to a conversation with their parent about advocating for healthier start times in their school. We all have to advocate. Find out who's on your school board. Call them, email them, talk to your legislators. Now in South Carolina, there's a bill recommending the whole state change their high school start time. I've been waging this battle in my son's district, and I think I have learned as a sleep researcher advocating that our school boards don't need to keep having facts thrown at them. They know this is a problem. They've heard about this research, but change is hard, and there are logistical concerns to take into account. I think what they need to hear is our stories, our stories of our kids, our grandkids, our neighbors who are suffering, suffering from sleepiness, from poor grades, from depression, from accidents. In schools with healthy start times, student athletes are far less likely to have athletic injuries than early starting schools. And I think our school boards need to hear about our students who might not be outwardly suffering, they're, just, they're surviving, but are they thriving? Is that not what we want for our future leaders? Sleep is the third pillar of health, along with movement, as you just saw, and healthy nutrition. And we are causing our teens to be unhealthy physically and emotionally. Every day that we do not take action, another teen suffers. If we could save just one life, would that not be worth it? I urge you all to get involved with the Start School Later movement. Join the Start School Later organization. You can find them online. Start a chapter in your community. Join a chapter that exists. Call your school board. Because on Monday morning, I will once again wake up in the 5 o'clock hour with my son and watch him walk out to the bus in the dark, along with millions of other teenagers, some of whom have depression or diabetes or even a history of a brain tumor. If we could make this change, we could see fewer kids dying in car accidents, fewer state troopers knocking on parents' doors, and more teens awake and learning. This is what Morning in America could be. Thank you.